Hey guys, it's Will. It's Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Thank you for finding us. If you like subscribing, that'd be a huge help. Give us a thumbs up, give us a comment. As always, give comments. This is a list video. This is a top 10 video. So give your lists, your top 10, in the comments so we can have a discussion. I love talking to people in the comments here. I love responding to comments, reading all the comments, seeing other people getting into conversations in the comments. It's super cool. I want you to ignore the baby drool on my shirt. Maybe you wouldn't notice it if I didn't point it out, but I just can't stop looking at it and it's kind of disgusting. But I don't feel like going and changing my shirt to do this video, so I'm doing it with drool on it. This is my top 10 favorite Hong Kong movies right now in this moment. Totally spontaneous spur of the moment. I did a list video the other day that was my top five Kung Fu Bob artworks, covers, whatever you want to call it, for 88 films. And I loved doing that. And that was a really spontaneous list. And people are always asking me for lists. And I just never make them for whatever reason. So I thought, you know what? Screw it. Let's do another list. And what should I do? Let's do my top 10 Hong Kong movies. But it's almost impossible for me to make a definitive list of my top 10 Hong Kong films because it changes so often and it really depends on what I've seen recently and what I'm in the mood to watch at any given moment. So what I did was I, I decided I would do my top 10 Hong Kong films right now. And by right now, I mean literally I wrote down 10 movies. Read the first 10 that came to my mind. I crossed off one of them because I was like, nah, and I replaced it with something and that's it. And then I put them in order and that's the whole list. I didn't spend like, I wasn't trying to be like, well, I'll get one Jackie movie, one John Woo movie, one Sammo movie, one Johnny Toe movie. I just wrote everything down that came to my mind and I'm going to give you my list from this piece of paper right here. And it might surprise you, but this list might be totally different if I did it tomorrow, if I did it yesterday, if I did it a week from now. So... This is just right now, in this moment, for fun, for you, for me, my top 10 favorite Hong Kong movies. At number 10, I have Avenging Eagle. This probably won't surprise you if you watch this channel, because I had this at number one on my list of Shaw Brothers films. I wanted to put one Shaw Brothers movie on here, and that's just the first one I always think of. I actually had Dragon Inn as like a backup. I wrote too many on my list, and I had to delete some stuff. Um, I love Dragon Inn, the King Who film, but I put Avenging Eagle because that's just, it's my favorite Shaw film and I had to have a Shaw film and I think that movie has a really innovative narrative structure. I think it has really innovative and really interesting camera work. It's a very unique film, but I also think that it's a really great example of all the things that the Shaw brothers did really, really, really well. So that's number 10 on my list of my 10 favorite Hong Kong films right now. So at number nine on my list of my 10 favorite Hong Kong movies right now, in this moment, I have Long Arm of the Law. I love this movie. If you engage with me in the comments, you've probably heard me mention this film or if you're in my Facebook group, or even if you watch a lot of videos on this channel, I've mentioned this film on here before. It's a, just a really, really great movie. It came out in 1984 and it's kind of like a proto-heroic bloodshed film. It's about these guys from mainland China who are ex-military, who come to Hong Kong to rob a jewelry store, basically to make money so that they can go back home and not live in like poverty and constantly be wearing where, where their next meal is coming from and stuff like that. It's a really good thriller. It's got really good action sequences. It has really powerful characters and it's a really strong drama. It works as all those things. It's also got some really interesting camera work like Steadicam and stuff like that. And it's just a really, really great movie. And it's a great example of, of 80s Hong Kong cinema and of um, like Hong Kong thrillers, of really just kind of like 80s thrillers in general throughout the world. Um, it's a very dark film. Uh, it's a very intense film. But like I said, it's just got it's got great characters. Like it's made like a drama. Almost kind of reminds me of Ringo Lam. The way that Ringo Lam makes kind of genre films and John Woo too, really. They make genre films, but they make them like their dramas because they're really heavily rooted in in character and like real world stuff like that. I don't what like I just keep hitting the tripod and I'm sorry, but it is what it is. At number eight on my list of my favorite Hong Kong movies right now in this moment. A better tomorrow now you might expect this to be way higher up the list because i put this at number one on my list of john woo movies and i talk a lot about how much i love 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 this film here's the thing i rewatched this movie recently and i it felt it didn't blow me away the way it always does now the reason for that is probably that since i started doing a lot of these youtube videos which is really just a year or two ago um, I've seen this movie probably like six times because I've edited clips from it for Instagram. I started doing like an edit of it for like a, like a synthwave kind of edit that I never finished. Uh, I watched it with Mike, you know, who edits all these videos. Um, I watched it again, like I said, myself the other day. 
Like, I just keep watching this movie, and it's gotten to the point where, like, I've desensitized to its power, basically, because I've seen it too many times in too short a period. And so what I think I really need to do is just not see it for a while and then go back to it and see it with fresh eyes, and I think it would be way higher up this list. But because I had that experience of recently revisiting it, um, and it just didn't blow my mind as much, but it's still just a great movie. Like, I, I can watch it and objectively admire. Like, the performances are incredible. The cast is incredible. Uh, it has got a really strong script. Um, and it's just, like I said, with the, with Long Arm of the Law, it's a, it's a genre film in a way, but it's really a drama. It's really about people and their lives. And I think it's a really powerfully and well powerful film and a well-made film. And it's just... I'll always love it. Chow Yun-Fat is incredible in that film. T. Lung is incredible. Leslie Chung, like, all the performances... And uh, it's just a great movie. And number seven on my list, I have Election. So for a very long time, Election 2 was my favorite Johnny Toe movie. And then about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, I rewatched the first Election. And it really blew me away. And the thing that blew me away the most was the script. This And, and by script, I don't actually mean, obviously, the written document. Because I don't have access to that. And even if I did, it probably wouldn't be in English. Um, the, the way that the information and the characters and the narrative and everything is put together in that film. It's just, a, it's mind blowing. Like it is above and beyond like almost anything. Like it, it's such a tight story. And you learn, if you watch that movie carefully and, and I've actually thought about doing an audio commentary uh, on that movie, just for fun for the YouTube channel, kind of turning on my screenwriter brain and analyzing what's going on in every scene. Cause it's like just the very first scene, right? It, it seems like, a scene of normal drama, but what they're actually doing in that scene is they're establishing all of these norms for the film that will carry on throughout the film. So you start in the middle of essentially what the plot of the film is, which is that the triad group has to choose a new leader, right? But in that scene, while you're paying attention to the setup, they're showing you all of these things that we're going to see over and over again. And it always makes sense to you because you're, you've become accustomed to it in that opening scene. Like they established the whole world in like five minutes and you're not even paying attention to it because you're paying attention to the plot. It's so smart and it's so well done. And I, I just, it's such an incredible movie. Um, and so that's number seven on my list of my favorite Hong Kong films right now. And number six, a movie that probably shouldn't surprise you, Super Cop, which I have right behind me there. And uh, Super Cop was a movie that I had seen several times. And then I watched it again about a year ago, a year and a half ago. And I was able, like, you know, like I was saying with Better Tomorrow, I couldn't see it with fresh eyes. I was able to see Super Cop with fresh eyes. And I was like, holy shit, this movie is so good. Um, and it works as kind of like a globe-charting James Bond type, like gun-based movie. But Jackie's got a lot of amazing stunts and action work in it. It's got a really solid story. I think Stanley Tong does a great job directing it. Michelle Yeoh is incredible. Like the back and forth between Jackie and Michelle and like constantly one-upping each other with the stunts. Maggie Chung's character and the way they handle the comedy there. Um... It's just, a, it's such a well-made movie and it's so purely entertaining that it's just incredible. And it's like, right now, that's my favorite, like, pure action Jackie Chan movie. Now, obviously, if you put a gun to my head and you're like, make the list, Police Story has to be number one. But right now, in terms of what's entertaining me the most, what I've watched recently and what I'm really loving and gravitating towards, I gotta put Super Cop on there. At number five on my list of my 10 favorite Hong Kong movies right now in this moment. It's a bullet bonanza. It's John Woo. It's Chai Yun Fat. It's Tony Leung. It's Anthony Wong. It's the greatest hospital sequence ever put to film. It's Hard Boiled. Hard Boiled is one of those movies that like I've loved it for so many years and again like hard to see it with fresh eyes but I, I saw it it's interesting because I had seen that movie a bunch of times and then I didn't watch it for a while. And then I saw it in theaters a couple of years ago and John Woo was there and did a Q and A and it really was like seeing it again for the first time because I, I was able to divorce myself from my kind of my preconceived notion of just going through the scenes and just see it as a piece unto itself. And every time I've seen it since then, which has been a lot, that's another one I've watched a lot in the past couple of years. I like it more because I see more about what's going on with the characters and with the, just the, the brilliance of what John Woo was doing as a filmmaker in that movie. Like the number of setups, I actually did an edit of that film, which is on my channel, which is called like hard boiled, but it's just the gunshots or something. So I went through and I edited it, the, the whole movie. So it's mostly just shooting. And in doing that, I'm seeing every single setup, like just to think of the number of camera setups they did. And the fact that John Woo often shoots with multiple cameras simultaneously and thinking of how much footage they must have had and to put that movie together and to make it coherent like that, like the vision that he must have in his head, his concept and his 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 ability to see 
from all these different angles and all this different action all happening at once in these chaotic scenes and then edit it together seamlessly so it's not a completely incoherent mess. It's just, it's kind of mind boggling. And, and the more I watch that movie, the more I see the genius of John Woo. And I, in a way, I almost think that that, well, where I think that, I think that A Better Tomorrow is more of that lightning in a bottle quality. And I think that a movie like A Bullet in the Head is more personal for John Woo and it's more about character and stuff like that. A bit, uh, Hard Boiled, I think, is maybe the ultimate testament to his genius as a, a visual storyteller and a filmmaker. And every time I watch that movie, like I said, it just gets better to me. So it's Hard Boiled. At number four on my list, I have Wild Search, which you'll see the Blu-ray for right behind me here. That's the Eureka release. And um, again, that's another movie that I, just, I love it to death. And that, it's funny because that movie... When that Eureka release came out and I watched the movie and I watched Frank's audio commentary and I watched the interview with the guy who did the um, the dubbing for Chai Yun-Fat back in the day, which is set up like a commentary, so you watch the movie again. And then I watched the movie again after that, so I saw it really four times in like a week. And, and that was like when I usually watch it better tomorrow. And I'm just bowled over by the emotional power of it, like the, the the strength of the characters, of the themes, of what Ringo Lam brings to those people and the world that they inhabit, of the amazing performances of Chen Yun-Fat and Sherry Chung. Uh, and I, it's just a really, really incredible, great movie. Like right now, if you were to ask me, what's your favorite heroic bloodshed movie? I would say that one. And... Uh, it's just, I just think that movie is incredible. It's so, so well done. And like I was saying with some of the other films on this list, the subtlety of character and the way that character is handled and the way that the film is so purely character driven that there are moments where the whole film pivots around a character decision and you're no longer on the path of, of the plot. And that, you know, like an American film, American films do occasionally do that. They're usually art house films, but like a mainstream thriller like that with an actor as big as Chang and Fat made in, in a film culture like America, you very rarely, if never, would see like the trajectory of a film pivot because a character makes a decision because they don't include those moments in these types of films. And funnily enough, I was actually talking to my brother the other day about James Bond and how the Bond movies, a lot of the stuff that I find really interesting about the Connery Bond films, which is like he shows up at the hotel and he checks in and he checks his hotel room to make sure that there's no cameras and like all the spy craft stuff and all the moments where you see Bond as as an espionage agent and who he really is and like character growth is not in the new films. All they do is hop from plot point to plot point to plot point, action set piece to action set piece, violence to violence, and in that they try to have character growth, but it's all just forced and none of it is organic and it just doesn't work for me and I just don't like those movies. And so Wild Search in a way reminds me of those older Bond movies where it's it's about moment to moment. It's not about, as you would see in a Hollywood thriller from the same era in the late 80s, Here's one plot point. Here's the next one. Here's the next one. You're just going on this line until the end. And you know what's going to happen. You know the hero's not going to die. You know they're going to save the day. And it, at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. And who cares? Whereas in this movie, you care about these characters. And you don't really know what's going to happen the first time you see it. It's kind of an unpredictable film. So that's Wild Search. I've talked enough about that. And number three on my list of my favorite Hong Kong films. Right now, you know I love Wong Kar Wai. You know I have to have a Wong Kar Wai film on here. It's Fallen Angels. It's got to be Fallen Angels. I just love this movie so much. Um, Wong Kar Wai has this thing that I can't really put my finger on. You could call it the X Factor. You could call it Je ne sais quoi if you want to be French about it. But the way that he puts music together and, and visuals and the mood and the tone and the performances and the characters and the quirkiness of it, it just hits me in a way that I can, it's not as easy to define as when I can talk about Wild Search and I can be intellectual about it and be like, he's, you know, Ringo Lamb and his screen are doing this, this, and this, and that's different from your typical thriller. Like, One Car Way is just an emotional hit. And it's just, it's powerful. And I love it. And it's surreal. Fallen Angels really is kind of a surreal film. It has humor in it. It has violence in it. And it has loneliness, horniness, like desperation, confusion. And it's almost like a French New Wave film, but like, filtered through like this kind of dark uh midnight almost like sci-fi tone and uh it's just it's a really unique and incredible film and i i loved it as much if not more than i loved it before upon revisiting it through that criterion set so i gotta throw it out on the list fallen angels at number two the top two really should not surprise you if you know me or if you know the channel at number two Winners and Sinners. So this is really high. I know it's really high. But I rewatched this movie recently and I had more fun than I can remember ever having rewatching a movie. It's just like 
the comedy hits so well for me. I know that some people think the comedy is too corny, and I totally get that. But for my own personal taste, what I think is funny, what I think Jackie and Sammo and all the other cast members in that film, like Richard Ng, and, and, and what they do well, that movie plays to all of their strengths. It is so funny. And I like the plot a lot too. Like the the it's the scenes in the beginning crack me up every single time where they end up going to jail with Charlie Chin and like the whole gang. And then they get out of jail and they start the service and like the cleaning service. And then they somehow accidentally end up involved with these gangsters. And like, I, I, it's just, it, it's so absurd that the absurdity of it works. Like they're baking it into the DNA of the film and like the whole um, roller skating sequence with Jackie and all the cars piling up and like, this movie to me is just pure fun from the very beginning until the very end, and I love it. And I had so much fun rewatching it recently. I would recommend this movie to everyone. Like I said, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. It doesn't really have a lot of fighting in it. It does have some fights in it, but or like more like stunt work with the roller skating and stuff like that. There's a couple small fights, like the fight where the guy gets kicked out the window at that like fast food joint. I don't know how that dude didn't break his neck. Like that, it, that scene is insane. Um, but I just love this movie. It has so much charm. That's what I love about it. The personality is just so overwhelming and you feel it so strongly and it's so likable that it's just, I can't help but love it. And number one, like I said, if you watch the channel, it shouldn't surprise you. It's Jackie Chan, it's Sam Hung, it's Yoon Biu, it's Benny Urquidez, it's Keith Vitale, and on and on and on. It's Lola Forner, it's Wheels on Meals. This has got to be one of the top, probably five most charming films I have ever seen. Sam Mo Hung and the Jerry Curls as a private detective is one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. The scene where he goes into that restaurant and he's like asking people for information and he drinks a bunch of wine at like every table and he's like, <laughs> it just, he's just thinking about it. I'm laughing like, and it had like the fights in that scene, like the final fight, obviously the Jackie Chan, Benny Arquita's fight is probably the best fight in any Jackie movie ever. I love the UNBU Keith Vitale thing. Um, and then the part where they're all sword fighting at the end and, um, just, like, there's some really fun, like, other little bits in there, too. Like, the car chase is super fun. And the thing where Yoon Byu jumps out the window. Uh, like, Jackie jumps out and lands on the awning. And then the awning is drawn back. And he just lands straight on the ground. And a lot of the comedy with Jackie and Yoon Byu And the stuff with Lola Forner and how they're, like, drooling over her. And then what I think is really interesting about that film, too, is that she's not eye candy. Like, she's obviously extremely beautiful. But she's not eye candy. Like, she's a character with a lot of agency. She's a thief. She pulls one over on them time and time again. Like, she's constantly tricking them. And, like, and in the end, she does need their help. But she's not, like, a damsel in distress who's just there to, to gawk at, basically. Right? She's, like, a really good character. Really interesting dynamics to her. And uh, it's got, like, that corny 80s vibe that's just... I just... I could talk about this movie forever. I love it so, so much. Uh, it's probably my favorite, well, it's definitely my favorite Jackie Chan movie right now. And like I said, I'm putting it at the top of my list of my favorite Hong Kong films, which is weird because it's not shot in Hong Kong, right? And one of the things I love about Hong Kong movies is they take place in Hong Kong, but I just couldn't put this, this movie anywhere else but at the top of the list. So my name is Will, and you are watching Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. I'm crossing the last film off the list right now. That is my list of my top 10 Hong Kong films right now in this moment without being self-conscious about it, just writing them down, turning the camera on, and filming it. I thank you so much for watching. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we will see you next time.